I've always wanted to live in Limerick. I love Limerick. I love living here. I'm not from Limerick, but mm-hmm. it's it's a uh, it's a place I've made my home over the last number of years, um, and it's a great spot. You know what yeah. I mean? So it made sense when I was working with John Kenny and Unbelievers that we base ourselves in Limerick um, because we both loved living down here. And at the time, I remember that was when fax machines were coming online. We had a fax machine. We thought that's, that's, that's it. That's all we need. <laughs> Dublin. <laughs> It's like four hours away still. We have a fax machine. Well, we have a fax machine. We can now do business and contracts and everything. Wow. And that was a huge, big thing for us. And we were uh, at the time. It's so funny thinking back on it before internet and all that. But is that what was special about the Unbelievables at the time? For is that the residence, the resonance it has with Irish people is like there is a, a, something particular that you're, I suppose, saying about being Irish. Whether it, the characters, the madness, the the Asides. Well, we, I, we, I, it's done through your work, really. Funny enough, I think it was. I remember as a kid growing up, and with not a huge pride about being Irish, mm. whether it be the troubles in the north, you going to the UK, having all these problems and everything else. I think there's one thing myself and John did was brought a pride back into being yeah. Irish and not being ashamed of your rural accents and mm. you, you matter, no matter where you come from in Ireland. It wasn't something we set out to do, but it was something that we were very strong about ourselves, our own identity and the pride of being from County Limerick and being from Turles or Tipperary or wherever and not being, not feeling like oh we shouldn't, you know, we're not as good as the Dublin heads or yeah, whatever, yeah. Well, no matter what we do we, we really kind of that was the way we were and I think that was another thing that really you know, it was there was no shame in having a thick country accent. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and in actual fact, it's kind of cool and, and, is, and yeah. funny. And and kids started getting into it all that. And that was an interesting. And so at the, around the same time, Father Ted took off in the UK yes. just after, and then it wasn't. It was cool to be an Irish comedian. And it got, that was kind of cool again because it shot down in Clare and down the countryside and everything else. And then of course the Celtic Tiger started coming along, mm-hmm. so we started getting money and uh, people started for the first time in years get jobs at home and yeah. not have to leave the to country here, so like, the yeah. more pride was starting to build up in Ireland you know, which I think is that we're a better country now of it even though I think the, 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 there's a lot of good things come out of the Celtic Tiger there's you know, some awful things but but a lot of good things in that respect came out of it you know and the other side maybe that people might know a little bit less about is your love of music which goes back to when you were yeah, I was kid, very um, small yeah yeah yeah, yeah I play I, I my dad is a great musician fiddle player um doesn't play as much anymore and I have mm. brothers and sisters who are all good musicians and it, I suppose it comes to my dad and my mum they were both musicians my mother a piano player my dad a fiddle player and there was always music in the house yeah. there was always something else. So, and then my grand uncles were all great traditional musicians and Kaylee musicians and all that so there was instruments around the house that were left by uncles grand uncles and all sorts of things um, so it was easy to pick up and was encouraged and yeah. I took up uh, when I was in the brass band when I was very young played the trumpet and then I went on and played uh, flute and saxophone. So I kept up the flute since playing traditional music and I play jazz and saxophone and that. And I, I kind of, I suppose when I went to, when I left school, I, that was the area I wanted to get into yeah. initially was music. And I started recording with some bands and joined up playing with different people and that. I went to art college in Limerick, uh, uh, really just to, not to do a whole lot of art, but to hang out. Yeah, I'm doing <laughs> make musicians and do yeah, something. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, it's <laughs> funny how that, that, you know, I just thought this is, I couldn't get into music college at the time because I didn't have grades and all that kind of stuff and hadn't studied music. Yet I was a good uh, practical musician. Yeah. I played a lot of jazz at the time with a lot of jazz heads and, and studied a lot of it uh, with some good musicians. So uh, I suppose I thought just get into the art the world. I was good at art. I have a few brothers who were artists. I thought I'd get into the world of the arts and mm-hmm. at least be in that as opposed to something else. I, I think it was the right decision to do and I got to meet great people in here I am today. You know, with, with an open mind went exactly off it's areas. just created it's, that kind of yeah, yeah yeah you can carry on um and you played um i've heard a story if you don't mind me saying about you being excruciatingly shy when you first started yeah. performing on stage <laughs> well that is true did I, you I, hide on stage i did yeah i used to actually you know it's like i think a huge amount of people are like that i don't know mm. i don't know too many artists uh entertainers that jump onto a stage and explode uh, yeah you know if you look at Dolores Arena from the Cranberry, she used to travel same, back to the yeah. crowd. Basically. I was a bit like that um, when I started playing sax with John. For, I started with John Kinney. I mean, I was. Uh, it's, to, see, you have to understand that with John, it was different, you know. Mm. You didn't just get up and play sax when you got up and you took your clothes off and you jumped around. You did it was like on cabaret. Yeah. Whereas I was used to going up with a band and, and being a sax player, you were never a front man anyway. Mm. You were always in the back and you stepped up for a solo and you stepped back again. 
or you, you played with a jazz man at quartet, it was very self-indulgent anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just, you know, I don't know, I won't use the word. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> it was like musical so, masturbation. Yeah. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you just, uh, just about the jazz. you know, just about the music and everything else. After all these years of of of, of TV and theatre, one of the biggest projects that has kind of uh, happened to me in the last couple of years w would be the movie Garage. Yeah. Um, and I'd say biggest maybe it might be fair, but I suppose for for acclaim and for how far that movie um, that spread and how many people that it affected, um, that would be, congratulations basically, yeah. I suppose is what I'd like to say. It's oh, an yeah, extraordinary piece of work. It was a good um, movie, yeah, it's, it was really, really good. Um, and it was great, I mean, I, somebody was talking about, it's just one of the movies are, are strange like that. It, there's a whole lot of different factors involved mm. in making a movie, like from art department to writing to camera to acting to directing to everything. And Garage is one of those unusual movies that everything worked right. Yeah. Um, everyone doing whatever they were doing was doing it brilliantly. Um, the acting, I, I did a good job in the acting as did the rest of the cast. And the director, Lenny Abramson, was amazing and Mark O'Hallan, the writing of it. Mm -hmm. and, and Peter Robinson, the camera work and the look of it and the style. The light of it and even and is yeah. very... Uh, so it was, it was great. It was, I mean, I've worked on quite a few movies and there's always something not right or something not working, whether it be a script or the acting mm -hmm. or whatever. But this one, it, everything worked and it was just fantastic. And it, 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 I, I suppose it's out there as one of the best Irish movies out there. I, I would suppose. say, absolutely. Yeah. And then I suppose with that, you know, it did spread across the world because you, the, you were the award at Cannes and the Evening Standard Awards. Sure, yeah. And That's pretty cool though, isn't it, to go yeah, to Cannes? Yeah, it was good, yeah. I mean, I, I won Best Actor in Monte Carlo yeah. as well, which was a big one. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of cool as well. Um, so, yeah, we, we won a lot of awards. I mean, it was just one of those movies that... That went carries, on to yeah. festival after festival. I mean, Lenny won Best Director in numerous ones. Won Best Film in Turin, which was huge. Huge uh, as well. In Siberia as well, and we did well in Toronto and Mon or Montreal. And it was so yeah. It was just and it went down to South America and all sorts of places and, and won awards. Um, but if I mean that's that's fantastic. But, it's but when you're making it in a in a bargain offly, that's not you, you know that's not what's on your mind. <laughs> what am I going to wear to can? <laughs> Um, I've always got a couple of different projects yeah. on the go. So I, we just finished shooting Matty, uh, which is a cop show uh, based in Limerick. It's kind of loosely based in Limerick. I suppose it is Limerick, but it's not uh, relevant to anything that's going on in Limerick. Yeah. It just happens to be here. Um, I finished in that. We finished in a movie in the UK called Sold Out, which we did some reshoots on it. That uh, should be going out soon. And I was just uh, did a thing in the Abbey there recently with Brian Friel and, and um, Tom Kilroy play. So okay. that, was, that was good, yeah. So you're still mixing, I suppose, your, your <coughs> film work, your TV work and, and the theatre? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm out there trying to do any bit of work that comes it your comes way. comes your <laughs> way, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's, it's good. I mean, it's, it's great to have that mix. Yeah. I, I, that's what I enjoy, is the, the mix of, of music, comedy, theatre yeah. and, and film. And I'm very lucky that I've, I've had a couple of vehicles over the last while that have allowed me to, mm -hmm. to delve into certain areas and get accepted in those areas, so it's good. Brilliant. So just to go back a bit and talk a little bit more about Matty, is this another comedy show or what's the, the story really behind this? Yeah, it's, uh, it kind of was the show that we kind of thought would be the vehicle for Pat Short after uh, Killing the Scully. Yeah. So um, I kind of wanted to, I'd be, I played five characters in Killing the Scully, I loved it. Uh, it was a great show, very proud of it, but it's very demanding and mm. it's, and also you just wanted to change and we've done it for six years and I didn't want it to, to fall dead and, and be, you know, kind of be on the TV too long mm -hmm. and peter out as, as happened to some shows in the past. So we came up with a concept for Matteo and we were working on it for the last couple of years which was basically um, a, a rural cop moves to the city Okay. and it's it's not too unlike any American f uh, cop format or English one for that matter. Comedy wise, it's got, you know, the, the, the misunderstanding of the and the unacceptable. They don't accept him uh, when he moves into the station initially. And of course, he's a bit of a blundering idiot and solves crime by default. Yet yeah. everybody around him is, is quite straight. Um, it's We've only shot one pilot of it so far and we're working down the scripts for yeah. the rest of it. So we've learned a lot from the pilot and we get a few changes out of it. So it's kind of a work in progress at the moment. Yeah. I'm Sarah Lynch. I'm Sarah Lynch. You've been watching iloveLimerick.com with Mr. Pat Short. We'll see you again soon. Cheers,